back on wave one last time for the last match of this long long saturday match number 10 between university of worcester and fc zang pauli from hamburg with a shouting who we are we are the kids kicker meanwhile the british squad without building a circle without our performance it's the game who with both teams who are qualified already for the semi-finals tomorrow taking part at 11 and 12 o'clock the only thing these two teams have to discuss or to fight about is who gonna end first who gonna end second just one look at the results will show us that um, Wooster have scored the 1-0 one against Anderlecht in the other match they played as 2-1 so they have a score from 3-1 St. Pauli after winning 3-1 against 5 side Anderlecht and 1-0 uh, against Liguria they have 4-1 so a draw is enough for Zang Pauli to finishing first. So um, on the other hand, Wuste is completely free. They can completely free. They need to win anything else of a week. Win victory is not enough. Wolf Schmidt, Zang Pauli and coach just told 40 minutes, nice football. Hopefully it will be a nice finish after this long day. 40 minutes, nice football. I would agree absolutely. I hope so. I've been uh, looking forward to this. This game, knowing it's going to be St. Pauli versus the University of Worcester. And Salibi guesses underway. St. Pauli shooting from left to right. If you're watching the live stream, University of Worcester in the blue and white shooting from right to left. St. Pauli in the black and white. Salibi down the left-hand side, colliding with the uh, kickboard on the left-hand side, level with the edge of the D, nice back heel. Uh, finds his intended target, who's uh, driving towards the edge of the D and Hippo's just shrugged off the ball. Nahez just leaves it and he's going to run through for the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper will be able to clear his lines. Gronau's back in goal and Salibi picks it up right in front of our commentary position on the right hand side of his own half. Nice pirouette and turn and goes uh, beyond his man. Beyond his man Hobbin. But Salibi still has the ball inside his own half, over the halfway line, wearing 10. In front of him is a load of defenders, but he just goes to ground as he tries to go through every single one of them. And it's uh, quite scrappy with Worcester. And Darren Harris tries to get the ball free. He does so and drives over the halfway line. Gets up from the initial foul, but uh, Salibi intercepts and goes over the halfway line himself. Lewis tries to get the ball back, I'm oh, sorry, Darren Harris tries to get the ball back and Salibi loses control and it goes out of play down the right hand side. In fact, it's just kept in, it's kept in well by Turnham, and Turnham over the first third, now over the halfway line, no, he turns back, does Turnham out to the right hand side, can it be picked up by Worcester, no it can't, it's going to be... Uh, Good strength used by Heenan. And now Turnham and Harris both fighting over the same ball. Turnham and Harris now are aware that it's the same player on the same team on the left side of their own defence. Turnham clears the ball but only up towards uh, Mike and it's uh, Hobden on the right hand side playing further forward than he has done for Worcester so far today. Mike over the halfway line wearing 12 goes down the left for St. Pauli. Hobden is back, and Hobden tries to clear his lines, but Heenan can't get as far as he would like, and it's a chance for St. Pauli to break towards the edge of the area. Harris gets back, and can play it down the left-hand side. Harris has scored a couple of cracking goals today, flicks it to the far right-hand side, where number two, Heenan, tries to win it back for the University of Worcester. It's cleared though by St. Pauli. Picked up in midfield. 
All right, turn him, turn him, driving towards goal, left hand side, cuts back, we're in 10, edge of the D, chance for a right footed shot, good save by the goalkeeper, who was diving to his left, the shot was to his right, so he had to stick out a leg and just hooked it clear, and he didn't just hook it clear, he hooked it clear down the left hand side. Philippe Verzen, young player for FC Pauli, as they all are, just loses out and... Uh, Williams brings it back for Worcester. Plenty of time inside their own defensive third. Midfield position. Side-footed ball out to the right-hand side. And Turnham. Down by the corner flag and Turnham can't keep it on the play. It's going to be some poorly goalkeeper clearance to get the game back underway. Uh, yeah, it's again between the posts. Sven Grona, between last game there was Timo Troncha. Now it's again Sven Grona with a fast throwing in, searching and finding uh, Seda Silly. We on the right wing, he switched direction three or four times. Uh, trying to getting some space now a nice circle dribbling but then he stepped over the ball with his foot he need to start a new attempt he decided by the pass backwards to Mike Loeffler but there was an interception by John O'Heenan Heenan is here right on the left board Heenan against Loeffler Heenan turn around trying to cross the ball but turn him wasn't in position we have four and a half minutes played it's fair to try to kicked the ball out but he missed the ball Roy Turnham is there like a cat crying on the floor and getting the ball passing it to Robin Williams Rasmus Nayes playing a way more offensive in this moment there is a wrestling uh, fight between Nayes and Turnham Nayes fell down off his finger who is already taped um, was a bit painful but it was the correct decision it was the foul by Rasmus Nayes for this wrestling move against uh, Roy Turnham. It's the free kick on the own half, right sideboard. Five minutes played. Uh, Darren Harris is there to tip in the ball for Robin Williams. Robin Williams controlled the ball, dribbling towards the center midline. Still, he's going to the box. He shoots, but there is Sven Grona who can save the ball. The ball jumped and bounced in again in the pitch. There is Mike Leffler. Mike Leffler with big problems to control the ball because Robin Williams is immediately there again to stop him. It's Robin Williams to switch the ball to John O'Heenan. John O'Heenan there in the infight against Mike Leffler. Mike Leffler working a lot physical there with his arms, but nice pass backwards from Heenan to Williams, but Williams have problems to find the ball. Second attempt, he get him. Oh, nice, very good pass to turn him. Turn him, controls the ball. Turn him, goes into the direction of the box. Turn him is in a position of shoot. And it's the 1-0, six minute. Right, turn him from three meters distance. He hits the wall and between the legs of Sven Grono, there is the 1-0 and Pete, I think your uh, provision, your odds are right because you tell me before the match, you're quite obvious that Wooster going to win this and they are on the best way. I think they were going to win. I thought they were going to have the uh, the beating of the defence. I thought that there was some party will cause problems to Worcester, and I think they will do for the remainder of the game. But six minutes gone, Worcester have gone in front. One goal to the four, but also they've done that previously in other games and have been pegged back and have had to come back late on. So we'll see if that's the case, whether they can game manage the middle part of the match better than they have done recently. They've got off to the same flying start as they have done in many other games. Celebrity down the left-hand side, just the sort of player who will cause... Uh, Worcester problems for the rest of the match midfield position just puts his foot on the ball turns away from Williams Williams is keeping with Celebrity Celebrity's mm. unhappy mm. with the attention that Williams has given <laughs> to uh, uh, Celebrity so he's still saying to the referee he's being told to calm down by his coach and the referee is going to come over and uh, funny uh, uh, Robin Williams words. putting out his uh, most protection just to having a nice trash talk and Joe uh, putting it in again, sorry to interrupt you, but it was funny like. <laughs> well, Robin Williams is funny, but um, Williams has uh, given away the free kick. Personal foul for pushing on number six. For pushing. And it's going to be taken directly on halfway, just to the left of the centre circle. And Celebrity will take it. Goes straight forward, straight towards Williams again and collides with the player. Williams comes off better this time. He has the ball in the uh, his own defensive third. Plays it forward uh, uh, towards number two. And that's Heenan. And Heenan can't stop it from going out of play. So it's going to be a goalkeeping restart uh, for St. Pauli. 
The goalkeeper has options left and right. He decides to go to the right-hand side. And the right-hand side, number nine, Verson. Verson with a good ball. The young player across the pitch to the right-hand side, but it's picked up by Turnham. Turnham runs into own player on the edge of his own area. He's now going down the right, up to halfway. He's on the right-hand side. Is he going to cut to the left? Yes, he does. He goes back inside his own half and then goes down the right to Williams. Williams doesn't pick the ball up, and it could be Heenan down the right. Heenan wins it back well. He's level with the edge of the D, edge of the D by the right-hand kickboard. Keeps it from... Uh, the two or three defenders goes back to Williams. Williams is right in front of Williams. He controls the ball. He's in the halfway line. He comes over to the left-hand side, builds up a bit of space, just uh, loses possession and then gets it back as he goes back over the broken line, switches play well. Out on that right-hand side is Heenan and also um, Turnham. Missed kick of the ball, which means it's going to be a corner. And it'll be a corner to Worcester on the right-hand side. Exactly, Roy Turnham going there to help his mate with number two, John O'Heenan. Williams and Devon Harris playing now defense part, so I guess they're going to be a dribbling, banana dribbling was a conclusion by Turnham. Now uh, Williams going towards the broken line. Every four players of Dunk Pauli are in their own box. So very deep defending, Turnham is dribbling, going back until the broken line, central position, doing the completely banana, going into the box, but well stopped by Rasmus Nice. Nice controls the ball and dribbling it's, uh, himself forward against uh, Robin Williams. He skipped Williams against Harris, he skipped Harris, Harris falling down, ball goes into the box, but then James goes down, loudly stopped to stop Rasmus Nice, catching up the ball, throwing it to Robin Williams. Robin Williams controls the ball in the center of the pitch very well, changed twice the direction, getting him some space, trying to go into the box, but Chalevi from behind in a fair way, clearing the ball, but in consequence, there is a corner kick. Ten minutes played, double substitution before the corner kick is going to be taken. So Heenan and Harris going to leave the pitch, and I see Karen Seal coming in the pitch. And the players number four and five are going in. And also William Norman is coming into the pitch. Meanwhile, Wolf Schmidt giving some advice to Sada Selebi uh, coming too late into this infight and it was missing not much to having a foul. So if he is present earlier, he can conquer the ball. But in this consequence, there is the corner kick in 10 and a half minutes, 1-0 lead after the goal by Turnham. And now it's Turnham again to have a second opportunity. He shoots well, but magnificent save by Sven Gronau. He dives down in the left corner and saves it with the left hand. It's another corner. Great opportunity by Roy Turnham. Great save by Sven Gronau, keeping his team after 11 minutes in the match. It's still 1-0 for Wooster. Another opportunity now from the opposite side, from the right corner, Turnham and Robin Williams there again. Yeah, Williams to take this. He's going to do the uh, banana run, has been uh, explained, but this time he uh, is intercepted just by the corner, but he's going to be warmed up by Turnham. Turnham nearer the halfway line than the goal line, trying to use his uh, his presence, his pace, and also his uh, strength and low centre of gravity, but uh, he's going back towards crab like back towards the halfway line, but Turnham does well. He's also been uh, well looked after by the uh, St. Pauli defence. So the ball's back in the D of Worcester with no St. Pauli player inside the Worcester half. So it's almost a standoff at the corral. The ball is being brought out of defence by Norman. Up to the halfway. Norman carries on going over halfway. Down the left hand side. Just uh, loses out to Salibi. Salibi down the right hand side. Goes beyond Seal and just kicks it down the right. And it will go out of play for a goal clearance to Worcester. Who are one goal to the four. 12 minutes gone in the first half. Good throw down the right hand side to Williams. Stops it from going out of play does Williams. Comes across and chance for a shot on goal. Williams scores. He scores in the near post. And does a somersault as well to celebrate. Well done to Williams. He got free inside the area. A low left footed shot past Gonham who went one way. The ball went the other way in the near post right hand corner and it's two goals to Worcester. Yeah, it seems to be almost a decision, even if it's a long, long time. It's 12 and a half minutes only played in this match, but 2-0, uh, being losing 2-0 for Pauli, uh, now coming back in the game. They need two goals to finishing first in the group after two uh, 
exhausting matches already done it's going to be difficult but yeah first attempt is next situation Zhang Pauli reclaimed the timeout maybe a fast goal opportunity there is for Celebi Celebi tries to shot hidden shot but uh, he uh, get injured in this attempt of shooting as well there is a referee timeout seven minutes to go in this first half it seems like Chelebi needed to be substituted <laughs> interesting because Christian Jung the coach uh, uh, the referee shown to coach Wolf Schmidt uh, then we need a substitute Wolf Schmidt answered no no try try <laughs> Uh, but then after Christian Jung asked him a second time to substitute and Jonas, uh, Lukas Masirko as well from the technical desk, uh, Wolf Schmidt accepted and uh, uh, now there is going to be the substitution. Jonathan Tönsing will come in for Sedat Chelebi who is going to be picked up under the arm by Mikael Proyl and the uh, medical assistant here. Even in the last game she is still here and ready to be there for uh, injured player ready to be there for Sera Celebi. We are still on the 13th minutes of the first half on the last match, 10th game on this Saturday on Butchwich of Line Football Cup. And we started the game with a throw in with a goal kick clearance by uh, Dan James. Yeah, Dan James brought it out to Seal, who comes down the center field towards the halfway line Seal with no one in front of him at the moment just over halfway inside the centre circle chips it down the right hand side towards Williams can Williams get the better of uh, some Pauli defender uh, no he can't and he's just pushed off the ball and uh, Williams regains possession up to the halfway line goes on a lovely banana and round on the left hand side into the area and it's into the near post side netting good effort there by Williams using his pace his power as well and it was a good shot but into the side netting and St. Pauli have called a timeout to try and stem the tide. That means that Worcester are two goals to the good. Interesting situation. Uh, Sven Gronau touched this ball with his knee and he reclaimed to Stuart Winton. It was corner, it was corner. Stuart Winton looked him with a smile regarding the, the result 2-0 and the Worcester squad was completely indifferent. He said, OK, it's OK, it's OK. So you see now after 10 matches, also the referees are tired. The players are tired. Uh, 14 minutes played, timeout. Uh, um, taken by St. Pauli and Wolf Schmidt even in the late afternoon early evening he's not satisfied and he's uh, ambitious to uh, help his team to give him the right advices and maybe um, yeah change this game scoring two goals but this is a big task for St. Pauli so the two teams taking the field once again Tonzing's on for St. Pauli <laughs> Also, number nine, Verzen. <laughs> or Hippo, as he has on the back of his uh, shirt. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the Hippo refers to. But it will be goalkeeper restart for FC Pauli. And the impressive goalkeeper has made a couple of really good saves, but has also been beaten twice. Throws it out to Verzen on the left-hand side. Nahez is just inside, but uh, Verzen goes over the halfway line, taking it steady in front of him is Williams. He misses his kick, and Terwell can, uh, Turnham can go straight, tries to go straight through Nahez, but he's a tall young lad, and uh, he brings it forward himself. Down the right, almost looked like he was pulled back there, and I think he might get uh, a decision. No, it's going to be a, a goalkeeper clearance. It looked like it might have been a bit of a tug on the back of his shirt, but uh, none given from the referee. Balls out to Norman. Norman in defence. There's no one inside his own half apart from his own player, Seal. So Norman goes over the halfway line, right of centre, pokes it towards the uh, the D, and that just goes straight forward past the goal line. So the goalkeeper will restart the ball. Throws it down the right-hand side. Right-hand side towards... Uh, St. Pauli player, as you can see it was, it was uh, Tom Zing, and Tom Zing tries to win the ball back from Turnham, but can't, Turnham goes past one, past another, straight down the midfield, straight down the centre of play, into the penalty area, just overran the ball, just actually got ahead of the ball, his pace, he was too quick for the ball, <coughs> and uh, managed not to get the shot away, but he's still down by the left corner, turning with Tom Zing. Tom Zing's using uh, good strength to hold off the experience Turnham, Right behind the corner in the left-hand side. <coughs> Turnham wins the ball back for 
Worcester. Chance to get a shot on goal if he can get the possession of the ball. He does so, but the shot is blocked well by Verzen. And some poorly can try and clear their lines. They do. Down the centre of the field, Norris drags back, turns away from Williams well, centre field, out wide to Tonzing on the right hand side, Tonzing puts his foot on the ball, level with the edge of the D, right hand side, comes across, chance for a shot with his left foot, that's blocked, the attempted shot, and Verzen out on that left hand side, loses out to Williams, and Williams doing his defensive duties as well as a good attacking job for Worcester, plays it back to the, the goalkeeper, Dan James, Dan James side footy ball out to Turnham on this left hand side, controls well does Turnham, inside he goes, over the halfway line, regains possession, down towards the right corner, into the penalty area he goes, almost stands on the ball as well so he can't get a shot off, can he play it back or does he try and bend his run round, he goes to ground outside the area, referee weighs play on and the break is on for uh, St Pauli. Turnham's not entirely happy with that decision but uh, gets up with a smile on his face knowing that his side are two goals to the good three and a half minutes remaining of this first half Tonzing down the right hand side wearing four by the goal line on the right hand side by the corner he's got Seal for company tries to hold him off but Seal is the bigger man and goes beyond him now he picks it up for St Pauli in the white and black driving towards the center of the final third attacking third Tongzing with a chance for a shot on goal connects more with the defender than he does the ball it's quite scrappy on the edge of the D can Worcester try and clear their lines in the blue and white they do nice little drag back and clear the lines Turnham's got the ball in front of him but it runs out for a goalkeeper close yes it will be the goalkeeper will get the ball underway and it's just over two minutes to go and Worcester 2-0 to the four it's grown on in position of the ball He's just looking for the way he can find. He looking for Jonathan Tönzing. He's right there on the line. He stopped the ball very well. Could try the banana dribbling inside, but he's immediately by Norman blocked there. Now it's turn him as well against four players against Seal, but he's on there again. And at least he gets a corner kick. Two and a half minutes to go. Good fight by Jonathan Tönzing against four English defender or players in this situation. Very well done, fast uh, throw in by Gronau and uh, nice fight by Tönzing. He gets now help by Hippo Fersen there to taking part the corner. Uh, giving a laugh by Paul Hugo who's next to me here using his uh, uh, shortcut name. Uh, it's a lovely name, I don't know how it's uh, that is a word there in English. We're going back to the game, it's uh, Fersen, but he loses the ball against Seal. Seal going forward, but uh, he's not in the position of the ball. Mike Leffler is close to the ball. It's close to the ball here on the board. Attacked by Turnham. The ball touches, deflected by Seal. Seal is in the position of the ball on the cross line. Switches to uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams in the position of the ball. It's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He goes into the box. He's in a shooting position. But Corona is there with the red foot. The ball is still in the danger zone. It's Jonathan Turnsing against uh, Robin Williams. Turnsing going to be pushed by... Uh, Williams, but um, yes, Stuart Winton is right there. He let continue the game. The game goes in the box, and there is a nice save again after the shot on the right, close to the right post by Robin Williams. Nice save uh, by Sven Grona. We go with the corner in the last 60 seconds of the first half. Tense match of a long day. It's 2 0 down. Bank Pauli against uh, University of Wooster. The team in the blue white jerseys are going to take the first. Uh, spot in the group and going to the semi-final Pauli as well but at the moment as second we go into this corner kick is Roy Turnham last 30 seconds on the clock Turnham turns around uh, and tried to shoot but this was no problem to pick it up for Sven Grunau and the young Paulian goalkeeper he uh, throws it up on the left side in direction of Rasmus Nice. Rasmus Nice there in the infight the ball seems like to playing no role uh, as well, Nias as Robin Williams, they are just fighting more with the hands than with the feet. And in the end, this blocking was whistled by Christian Jung. He goes here and shown the foul by blocking by Rasmus Nias. But it was the last action of this halftime in one second. It's done. You hear the signal. It's the end of the halftime. We have a double.
<laughs> so we are on wave online again. Last 20 minutes, I see good atmosphere here, organizing stuff. Yitka Grasikova is dancing with the English squad, and the English squad have a good mood to dance because after the first 20 minutes, they are in lead with 2-0, absolutely deserved lead. They presented as a better team. They presented as a uh, more experienced, a more clever team. Zhang Pauli fighting a lot, but I um, have doubt if they can come back in this game. But time will tell. 20 minutes to go, and there is the first foul from Robin Williams, the too late boy. Christian Jung is just a meter far away and immediately um, takes this decision, take his decision, and showed it to the ref desk here. And a half a minute played, first team foul, maybe this could be a possibility for Pauli to taking some more team fouls. We have the whole day only one double penalty because of the team foul limit, no? Yes, it's been uh, quite controlled really, when especially when teams have got to three. But uh, now here's down the right hand side, approaching the area, into the area it goes, actually misses his kicking, connects with the goalkeeper. That uh, completely accidental and the goalkeeper's... Uh, <laughs> Very, uh, very good to uh, have a smile on his face. A real wild boot from a very tall individual as well. Coming quite nasty. You don't need to understand German to understand this word. Rasmus Nais told he's a big scheisser. He was free in front of Dan James and missed the ball, miss hit the ball. And Dan James got a bit touched, making a bit of show. He got the free kick and it was a big chance for Dan Pauli. Just 50 seconds play in the first, say the second half. And yeah, big chance missed. But uh, Seal will get the game back underway, over the halfway line he goes, just left of centre, plays it down to the right towards Williams, Williams in the area on the right hand side, just overran it once again, that's two opportunities at the start of this second half, ball out to the halfway line where Williams would again pick it up, Nahez is there as well, he's trying to hold him off using his strength and he tries to spin him on the right hand side, Williams does well but the ball is just outside the centre circle, inside the Worcester half. Williams is told to go and get the ball once again, played down the right-hand side towards Tom Singh. Tom Singh wearing four, battled with Turnham, and Turnham does well. And the shout is for Roy to stop and maybe knock it back, and Williams has come to the near right-hand side. It's inside the D. Chance for Norman to clear his lines. Norman does well down the right-hand side, goes straight through uh, the legs of uh, Hippo, which I'll carry on calling him for the rest of the game, and Williams does well. He's an absolute boulders through two or three and he's been brought down and the player was on the ground and one foot was in the air and it caught Williams but uh, it was like a wrecking ball going through the defence there was Williams and uh, he gets the decision so he's going to have the opportunity from around eight metres out just to the right of centre but good play there from Williams. Yeah, Stuart Winton shows it here, of course, of playing the ball on the ground from Michael Loeffler. There's an indirect free kick for Wooster. It's a nice uh, position. It's nine metres, maybe ten. Half right-sided, um, ready to kick there are Seal, Karen Seal and Robin Williams. Robin Williams seems to tip in the ball for Seal, so Seal dribbling maybe a couple of meters to find the right way to shoot, shoot around the wall maybe. Three players of Dang Pauli after three minutes played in the second half are in the wall. Michael Leffler is still working with his shoes. Now he's ready and he's going to be the first person in the wall. So Sven Grönau building up a German specialty, building up walls. The, uh, the ball is to the right of centre and uh, the wall is going to be to the right of the goal. So the goalkeeper is crouching down on the far left. So if the ball is going to be moved to the right, then he will go to the near post. If it's going to move to the left, he will have an attempt on the far post. It's going to be moved straight down the centre. It was a bit of a mess, really. Seal just moved the ball forward and uh, carried on his run and almost blocked the run for Williams. But the ball's back at the other end of the field and Turnham does well. Brings and starts the defence and now goes into attack. He's gone straight down the wing. He's too fast for both the referee and most of the players and just runs it, overruns it into the goalkeeper's arms. But good attacking play there from Turnham. Ball upfield. Seal will get the ball in his own corner, left corner. And he can clear his lines down that left-hand side. Inside of him is Turnham. Tries to find Turnham, but goes beyond that. And Hippo can't pick the ball up for uh, St. Pauli. He can, though, if he goes back 
all the way inside his own half and uh, Worcester are quite happy just to sit back inside their own half and mop up any of the possession that comes their way. Williams comes forward. Strong tackle by Williams. Hippo tries to get possession back and Williams is strong enough just to hold him off. Plays it back towards Norman. Norman stops it from going out of play. No, he doesn't. It just comes off the back. And it will be a corner. So good play there by Hippo on his near side. Williams was calling for the free kick, but none given. And it will be a corner and left to the black and white of St. Pauli. Exactly. Five minutes played in the second half. There is Fersen and Rasmus Nayes ready for the corner. Christian Jung is inside the box to taking care that the English defenders, they are far enough from the corner. Seal is the first one who attack. Fersen tried to pass back, but when you hear the noise, Nice had a nice hitting with the bar, uh, with the ball, but he's standing already. Seal is nice controlling in the corner, and then uh, he tried to turn around and open the game to Roy Turner, who was waiting on the left side, but miss hit the ball. It slips over his left foot, and then it's again corner kick for Dan Pauli. And there is again Fersen and Nice trying to solve the situation. Now Roy Turnham going to come in defense as well. Uh, Fersen tried to switch the ball to Tönzing, but it was good that Turnham came back because Turnham wins this infight against Tönzing. He tried to turn around, but Tönzing closed away on the uh, sideboard there. It's still Turnham. Turnham defeating the ball with his back between the enemy and the ball. Nice work with his body, but then he tried to turn around and to clear the ball, but he hit it uh, nice. Nice work by Robin Williams. Williams tried to pass on the right side. Nice, nice fell down on the ground, hidden by his own teammate Löffler. It's still, uh, it's still Robin Williams. Nice crossing to turn and turn him is free and he's gonna stop but it was outside the line there's no penalty yeah exactly Stuart Winton sees the same way as me it was like 20 30 centimeters outside the box total correct decision there is a free kick for uh, Wooster after the second team foul Rasmus Nayes was the one he just kicked away Roy Turnham. It was a lovely pass, though, from this near side from William. It was a lovely crossfield pass. It was absolutely mustered, and it went straight into the uh, the, the, the onrushing uh, Turnham on that far side. He was brought to ground 30 centimetres, like you said, outside of the area. Great chance for the third. Yeah, the pass was mustered, the control and the touch was catch up, so well done. It deserved a good opportunity, but yeah, tactical stop by Nayas, and now it's a good opportunity for the free kick. Seven minutes played in the second half, 13 to go, 2 0 the lead. Wooster is preparing another substitution. Darren Harris is going to the away from the bench, but first we just have a look in this situation, in this free kick. The guide is checking and knocking at the post to giving an acoustic orientation for Roy Turner who's gonna get the ball tipped in by Robin Williams. Game is three, Turnham steps, Turnham shoots, but nice save by Sven Gronau with a right foot. Big hand by Pete here. It was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was good line football all round. It was a, a well-worked free kick. He moved it to his right-hand side. Good shot, good save, good football. Corner kick, eight minutes play, 12 to go. Williams and Turnham still there. Wooster is preparing the substitution by the next break. Zang Pauli is in the defense. Zang Pauli is in struggle. It looks more like the third goal for Wooster than the one, the first for Van Pauli, even in this situation, Turnham tries to shot, but there yeah, it was not very successful. He missed hit the ball, and it's going to be his last action for the next minute. He's going out, and he's going to be replaced by Darren Harris. Same uh, for the German squad. Jonathan Turnzing leaves the pitch, and Paul Ruge was the number six. Joined the match. 11 minutes to go. Still 2-0, 2-0 lead after the goals by Turnham and Robin Williams. We continue the game with a goal clearance, S number 33 in the goal of San Pauli. It's Sven Gronau with some lovely um, saves. He avoids a higher uh, defeat at the moment. It's Paul Ruger, the new man, coming here directly to our desk in the infight between the two number sixes. Winner is the English one, it's Robin Williams. Robin Williams skipped also the next one. And now he has no chance. He skipped left leg, going to the box, he shoots. And it's only missing for a couple of centimeters. Meanwhile, there was a crash between a lot of bottles here. And Bukowski hope everything is fine. 
Out on of the field. Course, not. The scene is soft, but the scene is smile on the Czech keeper, and I see another opportunity for the English squad for Darren Harris coming in. He goes into the box, trying to pass Nayes, but he loses the position of the ball. The ball goes into the arms of Gronau. Gronau opens the game again with Hippo Fersen here, right to our desk. Fersen passes uh, Robin Williams, but no chance against Will Norman. Will Norman stops the action of St. Pauli. Controls the ball very well and decides for a pass on the left wing where Darren Harris is alone, alone against four, but he does it very well. He skips one, he, he even the second, but then the ball goes into the goalie box when Grona picks it up, 10 minutes to go. Ball's out to the right-hand side, chance for St. Pauli down that right-hand side to try and get some room. He's uh, Ruger. Ruger on the field of play on the right-hand side by the uh, kickboard, comes across the... Uh, Broken line, but well intercepted by Seal. Again, well intercepted though by uh, uh, St. Pauli. Some plenty of hefty challenges coming in in this uh, second half. Williams does well. Turns his man. Goes over the halfway. Right of centre. Goes over to the left-hand side. Goes one way, then another does Williams. Drifting into the centre. Oh, it's a great save. A shot to the right hand uh, of the goalkeeper. who Just palmed it up in the air. He then uh, manages to clone the ball as it rolled back towards the goalkeeper. Fantastic play there by Williams. by Williams. Williams went from the right side to the left. Cut back to the right. Right, and his shot was well saved by the goalkeeper. Harris on that far side with Ruger. This is inside the Pauli half. On the right-hand side, Pauli shooting from right to left. Worcester from left to right. As we see it, and if you're watching on the live stream, that's exactly the same position. We're just below the camera. In fact, we're just to the left of the halfway line. Free kick going to be given to Worcester. Personal foul for blocking. On number six for St. Pauli. With nine minutes to go, must they have a free kick? Just inside the St. Pauli half, it's taken and seals just inside the centre circle. Out wide, good ball to the uh, left-hand side to Harris. If Harris can keep it from going out, which he does on the line, he's inside the semicircle of the D, which is just in front of the goalkeeper. Goes straight through two defenders, can't get the shot off, keeps him from going out of play. He's got Williams behind him, but he might not need him. Nice drag back with the aluminous boots, just to the right of centre, eight metres from goal. He's been out-muscled by uh, a couple of players, and Mike is over the halfway line. In front of him is Williams, and they're both holding each other, nowhere near the ball. And uh, Mike this time gets ahead of it, but Williams comes to this near side, right in front of the commentary position, and Williams is trying to hold off Mike, and uh, he's doing very well, but he's going back towards his own corner flag. In fact, it's going to be a free kick for holding, free kick to Williams and to Worcester. And we had the proof that the whistle of Christian Jung is did. as loud as it could be. Oh, hallelujah. Eight minutes to go, 2 0 lead. I hopefully tonight, if I have a whistle on my ear, I will discuss this with Christian Jung. So, again, it was the blocking from Rasmus. Uh, no, it was from, sorry, from Mike Leffler going backwards now to his uh, keeper. And deep inside in the half of Wooster squad, there is Seal and Norman to proceed this uh, free kick from the right side. Seal dribbling over the middle midline, going all alone, but then he hits with Ruger. Oh, it was a big clash. Uh, there was a deflection, and then it's in the consequence. Uh, goal kick, but before we can continue the game, Wooster is uh, substitution. Uh, Robin Williams scored one goal, it's enough for him, seven minutes before the end. He leaves the pitch and John O'Heenan coming on to the uh, artificial ground for the last seven minutes. We're going in the last seven minutes of long Saturday tournament in Vucic. And meanwhile, I say this, I get an agreeing nodding by organizer Hitka Khachnikova. <laughs> Sorry, I'm saying nothing. And we go on with the goal clearance by Sven Gronau, six and a half minutes, 2-0 down. St. Pauli, it's going to be tough to come back in this game. Yeah, Gronau has played uh, a blinder in this second half. A couple of great saves, and Harris has uh, helped him uh, to perform in front of this crowd. And Harris is driving into the penalty area on that left-hand side, where he's, he's snuffed out by the St. Pauli defence, who are now breaking themselves over the halfway line. Down the right-hand side, get a good head up of speed, but run straight into Seal. Norman's back again for Worcester. Worcester in the blue and the white on the edge of their own D. Down the right-hand side, good ball, but can't be intercepted. And he's going to run straight out to play. And Gronin will have another second opportunity. This time, 
the opportunity from his hands to bowl it out once again. Out wide to the right hand side where Ruger will pick it up in front of Harris, just inside the Worcester half by the left hand kickboard. There is just over five minutes to go on day one of the Bridgevic Cup. And uh, Harris just loses out on the edge of the D. And now Nehart Neha uh, goes back to Ruger. And Ruger inside his own half, just on the edge of the broken line. Goes up over the halfway line into the opposition third, and that runs out of play. And it will be a corner. Goalkeeper couldn't do anything about it because Norman just got his foot inadvertently on the end of the ball and just toe it out of play past the post. And it will be a corner on the right-hand side where Hippo goes across to take it. I'll carry on calling him Hippo. That's what's on the back of his shirt. Ruger goes over there as well. So Hippo and Ruger, nine and six. Yeah, if some probably want to have a comeback in this game, five minutes to go, they need to score a goal now. It's Time is running out, now it's the corner situation there. Paul Ruger is dribbling, but nice defending by Seer, forcing Ruger out of the uh, offensive third. And now Darren Harris, well worked after the ball, but as well as same as did Rasmus Nice. Rasmus Nice going to the box, there's a confusion with Will Norman, and then James get the feed against the knee, but games go on, Karen Seal solves the situation, dribbling out of the box and trying to pass on the right side, but it was incomplete the pass, Hippo Fersen picks up the ball, and there is a... Uh, Heenan there uh, in the infight against Fersen. Fersen tries to turn around and switch the situation, but good work by Heenan. Heenan is looking for the ball there with Fersen as well. Fersen reclaiming, where is the ball? Where is the ball? Stuart Winton was close, maybe he could touch it, but there is Seal to finding the ball again. Seal against Rasmus Nayes here on the broken line, exactly in front of our desk. Seal tried to pass backwards, oh, there was a contact with Stuart Winton, the referee, who blocked the pass line. And uh, there's Rasmus Nice, who can profit of this situation, but well done by Heenan and Seal together. Seal uh, in the box, backwards pass to the keeper, then James, then James opened the game fastly with the right foot to Darren Harris. Darren Harris on the left wing, already in the offensive third, in a 1-1 situation with Sadi Salibi. Sadi Salibi is working there a lot with the arms, oh, it's in the limits of the permitted. Oh, 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 it seems more like being wrestling than football. And Stuart Winton interrupt this uh, game. Three minutes to go, three minutes, 15 seconds exactly to go. Free kick, and it must be the 13th foul for St. Pauli. Exactly, one check, double check with the uh, display. So three minutes to go, every another foul from St. Pauli. Every other team foul, in consequence, is a double penalty. But before... We have the free kick. Harris was already there ready to take the free kick. Stuart Winton takes him out in direction of the left corner and Roy Turnham gets his present for two and a half minutes again to score. This. Maybe he scored his second goal in this match. Free kick there, Seal and Heenan already. Seal seems to get the ball tipped in by Heenan. Turnham goes backwards. It's like this. Seal on the broken line, left wing. He changed direction twice, asking for players who get in touch. And now it's turning, but turning with difficulties by the control, miscontrolled, ball goes over the line. It's goal clearance for Gronau. Two minutes, 10 seconds to go in this half. Short pass by Gronau to uh, Serda Selebi. Selebi oh, for the left wing, Serda Selebi does it by his own. He skipped turn him, he skipped in and oh, that was a sandwich, you can whistle that. But uh, Stuart Winton shows immediately no foul. It gives a goal clearance for Dan James in the goal. One minute, 40 seconds to go in his last match of this long Saturday. Dan James, one throw, one bounce, a meter from the halfway line. It's a collision between two St. Pauli players as uh, Winton turns it up. On the left-hand side, over to the right-hand side where Norman can come across and try and pick it up for Worcester. But Turnham makes a move on the left-hand side and if Seal can find him, yes he can, lovely reverse pass and Turnham picks it up on the left-hand side, level with the uh, broken line on the left for Worcester. Brings it inside and then does a nice little pirouette and goes back down the left-hand side. Changes his mind once again, switches play to the right. It can't be picked up by Worcester but a good tackle back through the back by uh, Hebden. And Hebden 
tries to go down the line. In fact, a nice little drag back by himself. He's got uh, Turnham on his outside. He's going to try and find him. No, he decides to turn back. He's inside the centre circle. He's going from right to left. He's now approaching the uh, edge of the D and just loses plate, loses his uh, whereabouts of where it was. And he just comes off Cellini and it's going to be a, a corner kick to Buster on the left-hand side. But good play there originally by... Sorry to interrupt you for the second to go. I would say just this situation between Grona and Seda Celebi. The ball goes into the goalie box. Grona say, last, last, keep away, keep away. And Seda Celebi running against the ball, tips it off, and it's a corner kick. And Grona, even if the game is done 2 oh, 30 seconds to go, angry. And he angry correctly because the player should listen to his keeper. So the corner kick is taken, 15 seconds on the clock, uh, Heenan go outside with the ball on the right wing, it's a uh, goal clearance for Grona, but it's going to be the last action, 8 seconds on the clock, it's Grona makes it fast, he's looking for Ruge, Ruge loses the ball and Turnham gets a chance, 2 seconds on the clock, he needs to shoot, he needs to shoot, he needs to shoot, too late, he shots with a buzzer, too late, but it's now into, it's a 2-0 victory, so Rooster, third game, third victory, finishing the group stage as first, St. Pauli finishing as second, both teams, well done, we see them again at 11 and 12 o'clock in the semi-finals tomorrow, it's have been a very long day, thanks a lot Pete.